and a good Tuesday morning. Luport, this is Mr. Rogero coming to you with what's going to be a pretty tricky forecast for Wednesday. So just wanted to throw this out there. I didn't get a, a weekly forecast out for this week, but as I've gotten a little bit closer uh, through the week here to Wednesday, I've noticed some uh, some models that are showing some really interesting weather coming our way. So what's going to happen, and this is the toughest, I think, the toughest weather to forecast is for different types of frozen precipitation. So what we don't always realize is that in a lot of cases when it's 40, 45 degrees and raining out, what we don't always realize is that a lot of times that precipitation is actually leaving the clouds as snow. And uh, that's all, if you've ever seen a mountain, a real tall mountain with a snow cap on it, what happens is the higher up you go in the atmosphere on a normal atmosphere. Now, again, we could have weird things going on like inversions where the warm air that normally rises runs into a cap where there's warm air above it and it can't rise anymore. A lot of different things that could go on that don't conform to the norm like we're used to. So we'll talk about all that some other time. For today, I wanna to focus on what really determines what kind of precipitation we get. So when we take a look at this, you can see up at the top, we see nothing but cold air in these clouds, air that's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So what's happening is there is snow forming in these clouds and that snow starts to fall. Now, when you have this area of warmer air that's trying to make its way in, it's trying to wedge its way in, it really depends on how much of that warm air makes its way through, how uh, thick that layer of warm air is, and how thick or thin the layer of cold air is back at the surface of the atmosphere, or at the surface of the Earth. So there's so many little things to take into account here. So we see at the cloud level at the top, everything's falling as, as snow. Well, if we get no introduction of that warm air wedge, and we end up with cold air below 32 degrees all the way out down to the ground, well, we're going to end up with snow making it all the way down to the ground. Now, keep in mind, you might even get a very small wedge of warm air in here, but if it doesn't last long enough, it's not enough for that snow to melt, so it will stay snow down to the ground. Now, you can see this big area of a, like a peach color here. What's happening is the snow's falling, as that snow falls, it's going through this wedge of warmer air, and that is enough to allow that snow to melt into raindrops. But if you get a thick enough area of cold air, again, at the ground level or just above the ground level, what happens is that rain is able to refreeze. And when it refreezes, it cannot refreeze as snow. It refreezes as sleet pellets. So when you see sleet pellets, you could think to yourself, wow, this is probably falling as snow, melting, and then refreezing as sleep pellets. So think of a frozen raindrop. Well, then you get the situation where you get freezing rain. Freezing rain happens where when the snow falls, it goes through a very thick area of warm air, and that allows it to stay rain most of the way down to the surface. But then at the surface of the earth, right near that lowest whatever, couple hundred feet, you run into freezing cold air again, temperatures that are at or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And what happens is then all the things at the surface, the ground, the cars, the grass, all these things are below, are frozen, they're below 32 degrees. That water is right around that freezing point, just doesn't have quite enough time to refreeze into a sleep pellet. So what happens, it hits that ground, it hits that car, it hits that grass, hits that sidewalk, and that little bit of decrease in temperature between that cold water droplet now and the frozen ground is enough to freeze it right on contact. And that's when you see what looks like water on the ground, wet roadways, wet sidewalks, and then you step on it and your feet come out from under you and you have a lot of walking problems and a lot of traffic problems. So you gotta be on your guard tomorrow when you're at that bus stop. If you get dropped off at the end of the day, just be careful because what might look like some wet ground could possibly be some freezing rain that accumulated and that is again that could be pretty dangerous for you so keep tuned to the weather just be safe out there and have a good day we'll be back with an update and a little bit more education as we head through the week and through next week